8.30 a.m. <laughs> and just talking to the camera. <laughs> and we're gonna go up Kalapata. We haven't had breakfast. It's freezing. We're not there. <laughs> Legit walking pace. <laughs> what elevation are we at? Uh, five, five thousand four hundred. <laughs> nice. The sun hasn't hit us yet. So it's really cold too. Okay. I like the bedding. Sun rising over everything. Nepalese down jacket. <laughs> oh boy. First of the helicopters, it's early. Number album. <laughs> I just need one more hat. I'm gold. You have it. Put it on. <laughs> it's a cool cat. <laughs> <laughs> totally ready for some breakfast and some coffee. Um, we've got to see the sunrise over Everest. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And today we're off to Le Boucher where we spend another night at a high altitude. Not gonna lie. Um, tonight, well, tonight, not, last night was pretty difficult. Um, we're getting better at high altitude, it's just that we keep waking up in the middle of the night with a headache. There's another helicopter taking off. There it goes. They literally run every like three to five minutes, taking people off the mountain. Um, yes, yeah, so I keep waking up with a headache, anything over like four or eight. Um, it's alright, it goes away by the morning, so I'm pretty lucky. Um, and last night we were staying at like 5,100 or 5,200. Um, but yeah, and then tomorrow we tackle the pass. So we got about a three hour hike to La Boucher and we leave Ding Boche today. But that is Kalapatha. Dick! Sunrise over Everest. Dick! Alright, food time. Bye! This is what the Everest traffic jam looks like. Damn, yeah, Everest traffic jam, all right. <laughs> Made it back to La Boucher and time for lunch again. <laughs> Actually, one more thing that was a really nice walk. A couple of hours. Um, <coughs> all the cold air has gone to my throat, so I can't talk properly. Um, but yeah, a couple of hours from Dingboche back to La Boucher, so it's the second time we've been here. Tomorrow's the big pass, so yeah, we're just gonna rest up. It's colder again today. Last night in the tea house, it was minus six when we were sitting inside. I was dying. Um, 
Yeah. Aaron tells me where he's at. It's 30 degrees. So who's winning, really? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just gonna rest up, eat some more food. Um, I've been vegetarian now for almost two weeks. Really missing. I don't really care about like chicken or steak too much, but I'm missing salmon. I love fish. Obviously there's no fish here. Um, and the Himalayas is a no-kill zone, which is good. So yeah, more fried rice for me. We've come from way over there. That's the start of it. We've been, <laughs> we've been walking for, <coughs> the air is cold. Um, we've been walking for maybe about an hour and a half. Um, and we're about to start going over the first of the, the little ridges of the Okay, it's not little um, peak ridges of the pass. This is the Kong Malas. This is our, our third and final one. Um, it's going to be the hardest one. It's been snowing really, <coughs> really heavily. So, um, yeah, it's really slippery and we don't have crampons or anything. But that's cool. Once I'm over this, I go down. So, yeah, Rhonda's feeling really unwell. So it sucks for her because that's two passes now that she's felt really crook at. And, um, Thankfully, I, yeah, I feel pretty good. So, and they're hard when I feel good. So, yeah, I feel a bit bad for her. But I'll, I'll quickly show you around. Um, yeah, and I'm probably not going to film again until I'm at the top. I'm going to put my camera away because it's pretty gnarly. So, yeah, have a look around, and um, I'll see you at the top. Up. I have no words for that. It was disgusting. Gross. Five and a half hours up and then down looks horrendous and so much snow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, job done. Hey guys, um, so yesterday I didn't film too much because um, we were going over the Kong Mala Pass which is one of the hardest passes, um, well definitely one of the, <laughs> the hardest pass out of the three passes um, and to be honest having the camera around my neck just was a little bit scary, I, any moment I could have slipped and fallen and, and ruined it. So. Um, <laughs> that was part of the reason. Um, the other reason as well is that it had been snowing pretty heavily so um, it just made the footing really difficult. Um, so I'm really sorry that there's not that much footage of the third pass but I'll, uh, I'll try and explain it to you in as much detail as possible. Um, so it's beautiful, it is amazing and anyone thinking of doing the three passes 100% you should do it. Um, the way we did it is we <coughs> 
sorry, I've got what they call the kum kumba cough, which is when you climb a high altitude and all the cold air <laughs> gets into your throat. It's not an actual cough, but every time I go to speak, it makes me, it's my, like my throat tickles. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we went clockwise um, around the three passes, which meant that it was a lot more challenging doing it this way. Um, I don't regret it for a moment. The reason was one of the, there was initially three of us in our group with Himalayan Wonders and our two guides and our two porters. And um, the lady Rhonda that's <coughs> been with me as well. And um, she was planning on going to do Island Peak after we uh, summited the last pass. Um, so that's the reason that we went that way around. Um, so with the pass yesterday, <laughs> I'm trying to think how to summarize it without scaring anyone off, but um, I loved it for the first, I'd say three quarters of it, loved it. It was beautiful, we were crossing glaciers, it was directly uphill, but I just felt really, really good. Um, I've been feeling really uh, <coughs> acclimatized, so for me it was just easy. Unfortunately, Rhonda, the lady that I'm with, she'd picked up a stomach bug and she'd woken up pretty unwell and so she was feeling really crook, um, which made it a lot more difficult for her, so much so that she wasn't able to carry a bag and um, luckily one of our, our, um, our guides, he's amazing and he carried both bags up the pass. Um, and when we were going, there was, there was literally no one around, um, not even porters because it's just too treacherous for the porters to go up and over this one, they go around. Uh, <coughs> we did bump into actually, uh, they were a little bit lost, three American student doctors that had just graduated or something and they were without a guide and um, an English guy as well who was without a guide. <laughs> And they were all there at the same time. After that we didn't see anyone and they were lost. So it was a good job we had our guides because uh, we were able to show them the way um, through the pass. So <laughs> the first like, yeah, the first three quarters of it were amazing. And then just the last part, just being in ankle deep snow and we didn't have crampons. Every single time you took a step, you'd be sliding back. Um, you couldn't see any tracks at all. So you didn't know if you were standing on... Um, a rock or you were just going to fall straight through the mountains so it was a little bit scary and um, <coughs> we were climbing at a, a much higher altitude as well so I, we were up over like 5,600 by the end of it. Um, the top was the top was good it wasn't as rewarding view wise as Kongmala or Chola it's just so high that once you reach it you just like Oh, okay, thank God. And now you've got to get down. Um, all up, it took like five and a half hours to go up, and then um, another three <laughs> and a half to get down. Um, and we stayed in a town called Chukung. I've got a little bit of footage of us walking into Chukung, but by this point, Rhonda was feeling really, really unwell. So um, it was actually a little bit concerning. So I, I couldn't get my camera out to do a summary. Um, so with Rhonda, it escalated that she had full-blown, I think, food poisoning and she was vomiting and, um, yeah, and all the other stuff that comes with food poisoning. And, um, I think her body had gone into <laughs> a bit of shock as well, so she was really cold. Um, so it was quite a concerning night for the two guides and myself who we, um, yeah, we had to, like, look after her and there were some doctors there as well in Chukong because it's the main point that people go to do um, the island peak climb. Um, unfortunately her situation deteriorated and we had to organize an, another helicopter evacuation so I am now a pro at helicopter evacuations and so she flew out this morning to fly home so I'm now um, 100% <laughs> by myself. I mean, I was already, but now it's just me and one guide and um, and one porter. So, yeah. So today was, was really cool. Again, I didn't do too much filming just because we're now, we're going um, down. Um, I'll try and put in little bits and bobs, but I don't want to keep like showing you yaks and then showing you the same kind of scenery that you've seen. Um, but basically we <laughs> left Chukong after the helicopter arrived. We went to Dingboche, had lunch. Um, Dingboche was quite cool, it was quite big, quite nice. And then um, <coughs> and then another 90 minutes it took to get to Pengboche, which is where I'm now. And I'll just, the um, tea room that I'm staying at 
is amazing like this whole time all we've had is <laughs> the toilets are just disgusting I can't even describe to you but I've just walked in I've got a mirror and a sink I haven't even washed my hands in I don't know how long I use hand sanitizer a lot because there's no running water um, and I've got a sink and a mirror I haven't had a mirror um, and an ensuite toilet with a toilet seat so pretty much I'm not gonna leave this place um, but um yeah so I guess to summarize I know it sounds really dramatic that I've just talked about um, really hard passes and then people getting helicoptered out and all that type of stuff but the reality is is that it seems to be that one in maybe three or four gets to complete their trip out here um, and everybody else either seems to suffer from um, not uh, dealing with the altitudes and not acclimatizing properly and that's yeah no fault of the tours because they're really good with the acclimatization routes it's just that everyone's bodies um, react a little bit differently to the altitude um, or they have stomach issues from the food but I've had nothing um, or maybe they roll the ankle or something because obviously you're walking on um, on paths that are really rocky or snowy or slippery or or something like that so yeah I mean I feel really lucky because I feel great we're at a lower altitude that we've been at now for almost two weeks so it's like I could go for a run because um, there's so much oxygen in the air and yeah I haven't really suffered from too many altitude related stuff I think at, at 3,800 when we were coming up I got slightly lightheaded and that was a result of definitely not drinking enough because I, I'd overheated walking it was really it gets really hot during the day so even though it's still like zero when you're walking your body temperature heats up and you're wearing a lot of clothing a lot of the time so um, I just didn't want to stop and bother everyone to stop so it was my fault so I had too much clothes on and I didn't drink enough water so yeah I think that was the reason for my lightheadedness and then after that went away um, I had a couple of nights in at around 4,9, 4,900 or and 5,100 where I woke up um, in the middle of the night with a headache but it like it was minor and it went away um, by the morning and then yeah everything else has been really good so um, it's just been an amazing trip and I really couldn't have asked for any more and I'm just so proud of the fact that I've been able to accomplish these three passes and they were all so much harder than what I thought that they would be uh, and just yeah just being able to do it and experience it and have my health and I also feel really sad for you know Aaron not being able to be here and um, Rhonda too having to get so close to her dream of climbing Island Peak and not even being able to complete and walk herself down so I feel I feel really bad for them but um tomorrow uh, we've got I think it's like an eight hour hike to Namchi and Namchi's where I had the <laughs> they have a bakery there so it's like the actual town of the Himalayas um, and I'm so excited because a they have like unlimited Wi-Fi in the coffee shop so I can use my phone for more than three seconds without it dying um, and B, they have the best German bakery with coffee and this chocolate carrot cake. And I've been thinking about it since we left like two weeks ago. So that is me tomorrow. And if you're wondering what happened to my gloves, three passes. One, two, <laughs> three. Um, but yeah, luckily I'm on the way down. I'm completely out of clean clothes too. And it's been almost two weeks since I've had a shower. Don't judge. Um, but yeah, I'll try and film a little bit more um, as I, I make my way down, but it's not going to be as much as what it is because you've seen some of it. Um, so, and also as well, we're going to walk down a little bit faster than normal just because I feel good. I don't think we need as many stops that like we can do longer days. So I'm going to be, I've only got three days left now um, instead of the four that it will take that they had plans to um, go down the mountain but that's cool and then I fly out and <laughs> I go to Kathmandu and it's gonna be warm and I'm gonna have a shower and it's gonna be great <laughs> um, but yeah 
anyways I'll uh, check in with you guys later uh, sorry for the ramble I know I've talked a little bit but I just feel really bad for not really updating you on, on Kamala and not really having that much footage to go with it as well I've got like one or two photos but that's cool um, if you have any questions as well make sure you pop them below and I'll answer them okay bye